Hey guys, welcome. Oh, now I can welcome. I, I started early. Who who knows? Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> and challenge accepted. You see Dr. John over here. <laughs> getting I'm just getting the calculator finished. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate you guys being here. I love your questions, man. You guys are on it. And by the way, thank you for all of you who who uh, were commenting about last week's uh, episode, which was on uh, making the best tincture ever. Uh, and somebody said that we were actually, what, Cheech and Chong in lab coats. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty much went and took a nap right after. Thanks for that, by the way. Okay. Um, and we had winners. We had like five winners. Jared, you know, gives me this sheet and there's like a paragraph of stuff. I'm awesome. like going, how do I say this? Okay. So. I'm going to just jump right into the winners because that's the most important, right? It is. Topics and Let's education isn't. We give away stuff. We do give away stuff. We are doing the Road of App Rumble today, just so everybody knows you're. that's why you're here. But tincture giveaways, Richard Spears, Chris Rosima, John Westlake, Matt Negrodsky, Negrodsky uh, Nicholas Halkides, 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 sorry. Sorry, Nicholas. Um, thank you. You all received uh, five milliliter samples tincture, and uh, apparently they are not my Thompson special. Oh, the uh, uh, 200 the proof alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite an afternoon, by the way, yeah. uh, after that show. Um, and uh, But they are mystery uh, flavors. So when you get them and taste them, send back or post what you think the mystery flavor is. And if you guess correctly, you win something, right, Jared? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we got it. We got the thumbs up. Yes. You you win something. Okay. So uh, stay active. There's a lot more chances to win. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our videos. There's a lot of education. All our stuff is there. Okay. I keep bringing up this. Sorry, I'm putting the piece of paper in front of me. But it's a long paragraph that Jared put here. Um, next camp. Next ten comments on any video will be entered to win a drain droid hoodie. Sweet. And we're wanting to do a, uh, aren't we doing a, a sound effect for drain droid? Uh, we are, but we don't have it programmed in yet. Oh, but it's going to go drain droid. Something like that. Drain droid. Does that sound good? You like that? Okay. Prizes never stop around here. That's, that's very poetic, Jared. That's very <laughs> nice. Um, we just, uh, you know, we, and we did send a swag peg to Barney in the UK. Sweet. So that's going to be nice. So, and any of you, you all have been to many of our shows, uh, the trade shows and things through through the last uh, year. Uh, and if you've got our hat, our T-shirt, whatever, you know, find yourself in a compromising position with that gear and take a picture. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be compromising, I guess. It, better if it is. But, yeah. Well, uh, let's get that's social media greatness yeah. right there. Yeah. So, but take a picture, and then we send gear when we see that. We'll hook you up with something nice. I, I think that we, we definitely have given away at least 10,000 t-shirts. 10,000 t-shirts. At least that. And uh, probably double the amount of hats. That's a, that's a lot. And that's not including the little swags and stuff. So, yeah, we've given away a lot. We're stuff. not cheap around here. No. All right. So, again, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you. This is a fun place. This is a place to ask tough questions, fun questions. Um, we don't really answer the personal questions, even though they have come. <laughs> He's embarrassed because they're always for him. Um, no hold barred. Uh, join chat. Invite your friends. There will be a replay if your screen gets frozen for any reason. Other than other technology, the technology we use, you just push that red button on the top that will reconnect you. And it doesn't take you all the way out. It gets you right back in. So that's good. Enough, enough said. Uh, live tour, resources, CBD jam session. I just got off a CBD jam session with Turkey. Sweet. Did you order the uh, Istanbul Express? <laughs> that would be fun. And by the way, it's Constantinople. I, I always order it by the double. Yeah. See, I'm Greek by marriage, so it's Constantinople. Okay. Still. Okay. All right. I, that's I'm, fine. You know, I, we just. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. It happens. Just throwing down. Um, advanced extraction guide, distillation guide, calculator library. Boy. And we've got new calculators coming. We're going to show you later on. Uh, and mini course library is coming. Um uh, thank you for the questions that are already pouring in. Um, so today, okay, enough of all of that crap. Sorry. Uh, today, Rotovap Rumble. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of my nomenclature. Advanced solvent removal without Rotovaps or 
pros and cons of falling film versus robot. What? It's hard to say that five times real fast. <laughs> versus right. rotovap distillation equipment. All right, there we are. Is that all set. was that your title? pros and cons? Pros and cons of falling film versus rotovap distillation equipment. But all that was only more. that was just once. <laughs> 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 it's it's fun to get the scientists going. <laughs> All right. Um, good. Oh, boy. So let's, without further ado, we're going to talk about how to get rid of bottlenecks in your CBD process, mm -hmm. right? Yep. We're going to be talking about, you know, streaming, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to let you jump. By the way, introduce yourself in the chat, if you would. Tell us who you are um, and where you are in the process, whether right. you're a farmer, you're a chemist, right. whether you are a processor, co-packer, investor, let us know. Those, yep. those would be good. Um, and then questions that you have uh, about this process. Right. Like, what the hell is foaming film? What is it? And why do we use it? Exactly. And where do we use it? And right? where do we use it? Okay, good. All right. all right. So all of that. Sorry for that big diatribe. No, no problem. No problem. Um, okay. So, so why, don't we, why don't we get right into the... I, 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 of course, I have a table. You guys know that, right? <laughs> I have a table. I have a comparison where's, table. Where's the one button? It has to be, Yeah. <laughs> There's Randy's been, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. We do have sound effects today, so yeah. so th there might be some technical issues, but it's going to be fun. All right, all right. So uh, so let's let, jump in. Let's jump in. This shouldn't take very long. Maybe five minutes, and we'll have a conversation about and it. And you all so, know yeah. that his five minutes is really like twenty five. Oh minutes. yeah, probably about that. Probably yeah, those analytical chemists. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, there they are. <laughs> but it'll be that. fun. The pros and cons of following film versus rotovap distillation. I'm at the edge of my seat. Okay, this is here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's oh they're they're saying just one second. Are we set? Okay, good. Yes. All right. So oh look at this. Here it is. Oh. Uh here's a rotovap versus falling film. This is a rotovap here. Everybody's seen those. Those are in uh yeah, those are in the laboratory. They're all over the place. They're small, they're big, lots of uh, glass. typically in in like hemp processing, mm -hmm. uh, they would be, uh, you know, they would be like in the 20 to 50 liter range approximately. Um, they have a condenser. You can see the condenser up there um, and then a condensed solvent uh, side of it too. So, and the heating bath. So what happens is you, in the inlet port, you turn on the vacuum. So this is all under vacuum. You hook up your vacuum here uh, and then you're sucking in the fluid uh, through the inlet port into this glass round bottom um, and once you have it you know about maybe a quarter of the way full you raise this heating bath and the heating bath is you know 60 degrees celsius for example and uh for for if you're going to do like ethanol uh, you have different temperatures you can set this heating bath at and it, it, basically the the ethanol will start to evaporate it comes up here and then it starts to condense on these cold condensers so there's a chiller that's required over here uh, that will hook up to these condensers here and then it'll start to drip down into here. So here you can see it's separating, uh, separating everything, which is pretty cool. Um, that is in contrast to say a falling film, which is a little bit different. It has the same type of idea of, of evaporation plus condensation, okay. uh, but it, it does it in a slightly different way. Um, you can see this is a just an artist just depiction I drew this uh, artist depiction of what a falling film looks like here you have the fluid coming in so this is the same thing as the inlet port here the fluid would come in here and then uh, it would start to drop down and fall down by gravity now uh, on on these inside inside of these tubes this is actually an array of tubes that are kind of welded together here mm. and they go on the inside now on the outside of those tubes you have uh, heat uh, which fluid Heating fluid that's that's uh, circulating over those tubes, so it's always hot. And as the falling film goes down through the tubes, what's neat about that is it it starts to um, you know it starts to evaporate. Okay, and um, this particular one, hey James, this isn't working anymore. My uh, the mouse mouse is not working anymore. Yeah, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and just moments ago, what was really funny, and you didn't see this, but. James almost took a header <laughs> <laughs> behind the scene. It was it was actually kind of fun. Oh, it's uh, like man down, man. Yeah, down. yeah, you can do it that one. Yeah, yeah that, that's fine. That, that, oh, I can't. Every time I reach for it, he keeps pulling it away. I think that that's fine. Uh, let's see. We're we're gonna go away from Bluetooth. 
over to yeah okay there we are sweet All there right. we go here we go wow oh you thanks. guys are on the ball look at that okay so here's the here's the inlet to the tubing or here's the inlet uh here it starts to fall down here and then it um and then it and then it comes down here there's a bunch of gas then you know the ethanol plus uh plus the oil is in this area it basically uh um, migrates through the, these tubes here and then it's off to the condenser. So you can see this condenser here, that's actually a separate unit. So this is an evaporation machine right here and, uh, and the condenser's off over here. So um, you can see the difference. Instead of a round bottom, you have a bunch of uh, tubes that are arrayed um, or some sort of packed bed. That's another way to do it. Um, which is basically, uh, you know, instead of having a bunch of tubes, you have just uh, like a packing in there and the, the fluid will fall over the packing. Okay. Um, that's, that's another way to do it. Okay. So I apologize, but no, no problem. <clears throat> what's running through my head right now is on the rotovap side with the glass round bottom, mm -hmm. all I think of is Queen with flat bottom girls song. <laughs> and on the right, when we're talking about the um, the whole falling film array, I don't know why, but David Bowie's in my head. Because <laughs> I can just hear him singing a falling film song. I, I think so. Uh, I, <laughs> Sorry. All right, go on. <laughs> hilarious. This is good. This is all good. It's all good. <laughs> Get me off my mojo here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, all right. So, here we go to the next one. Pros and cons, rotary evaporator for ethanol removal. Okay, so... Um, you have two different ways of, of doing this, the pros and cons of just the rotary evaporator. So this is the rotary evaporator. Okay. Um, like I said, it's used all over the world and, uh, you they're know, everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. So the, the con is that you have to have a batch process. So for example, once the solvent comes out here, uh, comes out here, condenses in here, and there's a oil left here. You keep on adding more, but eventually this is going to fill up. You have to stop, take this round bottom off, uh, and then you have to put a new round bottom on or clean it out, put a new round bottom on, or you have to, um, and, and also you have to remove the solvent that's in there. Okay. Oh my gosh. So if you're running, for example, overnight or something like that, you're going to, you, you know, really you have to have someone come in periodically to either fill it up or, or remove the, uh, Sounds like a complete here. pain in the ass. It, it is. It is. Okay. Now there, there are some of these that, um, that have been made that will automatically remove, um, you know, some of the solvent here, but it, ultimately you're really going to, once this starts to fill up with, uh, with oil and with product, you're going to have to remove it. So that's what we call a batch process. So you're starting, you're stopping, you're filling, okay. starting, stopping, filling. Um, uh, I have never been, I have never broke any one of these, but the people who work for me have broken them. And uh, so, you know, I think that the main thing there is if you have high quality glass, um, you're probably not going to break them. So if, but if you're buying some cheap uh, piece of equipment, um, there are, there are definitely some, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Breakage. Yeah. It's going to break. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we had that. But that would effect. be bigger for, for, I like okay, it. We're never, we're never going to get away from that now. Okay. <laughs> he showed me. Glass was not was. as robust. <laughs> you can even increase the, the volume there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's better. See, now that sounds like it would be a 20 liter round bottom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Breaking. Okay. okay here's a. Few. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. What was that? <laughs> that, was, that was not me. Oh, that was the wrong button. <laughs> okay. No Romstein today. Okay. Uh, one temperature distillation. Okay. So that's the other kind of the pro and the con is that, you know, typically you'll have a one temperature here on this heating bath. Okay. And you're not going to really ramp it up over time. Right. Okay. Because it's going to stay there at one temperature. So if you have multiple uh, solvents that you're trying to remove in here, you would do that. Uh, you, you, you would set the uh, temperature at one temperature, you do everything and then you put the, put it back in and then increase the temperature again. Okay. And okay. is it typically, is it a very different temperature depending on what you're evaporating? Yeah. 
Okay. So if you have pentane or if you have ethanol or if you have water or, uh, you know, they're all going to be different. Okay. So in our world, if, if we're using, if we're evaporating ethanol, for example, right. what would be a typical temperature? Range? Uh, typically within, within this under vacuum, we, we would typically run this around 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah. Something right. like that. And it, we don't run it at the boiling point because it's under vacuum. Yeah. The, the whole purpose of the vacuum is really to lower the boil, boiling point anyway. Nice. So, yeah. um, cause that would be even more dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Um, one temperature distillation. So that's a, that's an issue. Mm. And then if you're trying to scale this up, suppose you're trying to do, you know, uh, th- uh, you know, hundreds of liters or, or, you know, right. Thousands of liters even, oh my uh, gosh. then you really don't have a, uh, you have a scalability issue because you're having to take, uh, the batch process and you're having to do it again and again, you know, stop, start, stop, start. You're going to have to have uh, people in order to do that labor, um, and then you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of glassware and potential breakage. And if you have a lot of uh, those types of, uh, if you have a lot of the, okay. Oh my gosh. We're, we're totally annoying everybody now. <laughs> okay. Scalability, product degradation. If you have to heat it up uh, really, really hot in order to get all of the solvent out, mm-hmm. then you will have product degradation. For example, sometimes, um, there are um, there are mixtures of of solvents, say like ethanol and water, and they're very very hard to remove each re- remove from each other. So okay. and difficult to get oil out of the glass bulb. I don't know. You, you have to get your arm down in there typically if it's a very large glass bulb. Think about that. Yeah, it's it's we should James. We can't have these on here. It's not. It's no. You can't take them away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're mine. All right. All right. Here and then very low throughput. Okay. So. The pros are that it's effective, it it works, it works, and and it's 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 relatively inexpensive, depending on breakage. Yeah. Uh, okay. So exactly. So if you have say twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollars worth of oil in your in your round bottom and you break it, uh, you know, you might be able to recover some of it, but you're going to have to filter it and uh, oh my you gosh, know, just yeah. make sure there's no get glass shards in there, right? So. Um, I, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that that would be very good. So anyway, <laughs> pros and cons of the falling film evaporator. Uh, the pros are throughput. Typically the falling film evaporator, what's awesome about it is that you don't have to uh, have a batch process. You can just continuously uh, recirculate. Um, your product is pretty consistent and also product preservation because the residence time, the time that it, you know, it, that the material sees the heat is, is very short. As right. opposed to a road of app where you're always constantly evolving it. It takes a heat. long time yeah. to go through. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Falling film cons, batch process, cleanability, expense, can plug. Okay. So s- not all falling film evaporators are equal. Okay. Okay. Some of them are batches. They made them into batches. So wow. like, for example, if I have to have a ever increasing temperature mm-hmm. uh, available, um, to get all my solvent out, yeah. usually you're going to do that in a batch process. Like for example, here it is right here, mm-hmm. this right here, you're going to change the temperature and then you're going to push it through. You're going to get everything. You're going to take the stuff out again, change the temperature. Okay. Push it through. And then it would recirculate this way. Gotcha. Just like that. So in, in that sense, the falling film and traditional falling film uh, they, they do have the con of a batch process. If you're trying to have, increasing amounts or if you're trying to change the conditions as you're uh, as you're recirculating it okay um also from the standpoint of cleanability it's a little there's really easy to clean this just think about all those tubes how to clean them right Mm -hmm. that's that's an issue so unless they're really large tubes and you can put a lot of uh, like solvent through them to clean them um cleanability here is, is 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 an issue okay so um, that's one thing you need to think about. Um, also, they're more expensive, way more expensive than the oh, road, road of apps. Yeah. And, uh, and also, if you have very viscous fluids and you're, you're putting them into your, um, your falling film through those tubes, if they end up bridging in one of the tubes, they could plug the tube. So if it's so, thicker gunk. Is it, if it's thicker, the thicker, the, the thicker it is, the worse the, it's, the it's possibility tough. of a plug. And tougher. And then not only from running, but then from cleaning. Right. Also, right. Right? right. 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 So you'll see a lot of these on the market. They, they look something like this. Typically they, there's a couple condensers over here. Um, and typically what people do is they, they run it once and then they'll run it 
the, the they'll collect the, the oil mm -hmm. and then they'll run it again and then they'll run it again so what they're trying to do is get down to you know 2000 to 5000 ppm of uh of ethanol left so they can put it into their distillate right so that that's their kind of their goal um because that's the so that's why they have acceptability to, yeah right? that, and that's why you need to really do it again and again and again with a lot of a lot wow. of the uh systems that are out there so that's the that's the pros and cons related to uh, rotary film. evaporators and falling films now uh we have taken the uh idea of the falling film and we've evolved it uh past we've evolved it very simply um number one uh, we recognized early on that it people don't really like to, you know, recycle their fluids again and again and again in a falling film system. Sure. Okay. So what we did was we put three of them together oh. and uh, we only have uh, tubes in the first one. And in the second and third one, we have a special packing material that we use. So it doesn't get plugged oh. because the viscosity increases uh, considerably as it goes from the first column to the second column to the third column. It's thicker so and thicker. It gets thicker yep. and thicker, and there it, it's more prone to plug. So we're eliminating the plugging issue. Um, the And it also eliminates the batch processing issue. You don't have to stop and redo it again, change your conditions and redo it again, because each column that we have in succession uh, essentially is a, um, you know, is a is a new condition. Let me just fast forward here and I'll show you what it looks like. There's what it looks like. Oh, okay. That's our rendition of a falling film, uh, falling film evaporator. This you can see. There's three separate evaporators. Each one of those can be held at a different temperature, mm. which is pretty sweet. Yeah. There's condensers that are up in front, and each of the condensers can also you can direct how many watts are being um, dumped in those condensers with each fraction. So that's pretty cool. Here's a pump. That's a feed pump. The pump basically feeds directly into this first fraction and the ethanol gets removed. And here. that's where the tubes are. Yeah. That's and that's where that the one. tubes are. Okay. And then here we have the second fraction and this is where the packing is. And then the third fraction. And then here's where the packing is. So the, the oil coming out of here is ready to go right into your still. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. So it's, it's three passes. It's three passes. And all then that other one, it would have, you'd have to recycle, recycle it through it. the tubes right, exactly. three times. Change your conditions, recycle, change your conditions, recycle. And you'd have to probably increase heat because of the thicker. Right. So, the, it, so this is all done in a row. This is a reservoir for the solvent uh, that is being collected here, here, and here. Oh. So this is a reservoir and you have a fluid reservoir and this constantly will eject out solvent. Um, this will constantly remove the actual oil mm -hmm. out, so you can hook this directly to your your distillate machine if you'd like to. Um, you can also change the conditions on this final one to, you know, do like decarboxylation in that column, which is pretty sweet. Oh wow! Uh, so you could, for those who are, you know, don't decarboxylate ahead of time, they want to decarboxylate after. You can use this third column for decarboxylation. The other thing that you can do with this machine that you, you that is a that is a evolution beyond what a traditional falling film will do is you can collect each of these fractions separately. So you could use it for, for example, fractionation of terpenes. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to have, you know, if you want to have different terpenes with different boiling points, you could, uh, you know, decouple all these. All of these go to the same, uh, you know, same same reservoir now, but in in the case where they would be run independently of one another, you would get a fraction one, fraction two, fraction three. Okay. It's pretty sweet. So I've, I've been asked uh, numerous times, people want to get away from ovens to decarb. Mm -hmm. This is the way to do that. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you don't want to decarb ahead of time, yeah. um, you, you're basically uh, losing, you know, you're, you're basically losing all those fresh terps. Yeah. That's the negative of exactly. it. But if you want to, uh, you know, if you're going through some sort of ethanol extraction and you want to, uh, basically do a distillate out of that, you're going to have to decarb before it hits the distillate machine. Sure. And that means basically cooking the living daylights out of your oil. <laughs> okay. And you, all your terps are basically non-usable at that point. Exactly. You're so burn them. Okay. that's one one good reason why you know CO two is a is a good technique. Gotcha. Um, but what, you can capture the terps here as well in that 
in that yeah if you were to use this in a certain way like for example if you wanted to fractionate a, mm -hmm. a a big bucket of terps okay then you could fractionate them into different boiling point settings oh yeah that's kind of cool oh, it's that just is a cool. it's okay. just an, a Good. different way to use the exact same machine um Good clarification some of the things about this machine it's a c1d2 piece of equipment it also runs with a CO2 inert gas, uh, which no other system on the market does. And so if there is a leak, it's basically a CO2 leak, which is non-flammable. Mm. Um, so there's a whole bunch of items in there that people, you know, really like. We, we've kind of innovated on that. Side, okay, so, so I just want, for clarification, mm -hmm. you said this is a C1D2 piece of equipment. Right. Does that mean that it's self-contained or it needs to be in a C1D2 room? Well, if there is the requirement for a C1D2 uh, room and there is a room, this this, Would this go piece in of equipment could go in that. Okay. Right. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Otherwise, you'd have that has to do with the electrical enclosure and all yeah. of that. So let me kind of move up here now to my um, to, to the different why the Fractron is the best falling film. Again, we got continuous operation. We got integration with downstream equipment. Like I said, you can you can uh, actually decarb in the machine and then move it on directly to the um, dis distillizer machine or the distillate machine. Um, three independent zones of temperature allows uh, flow control allows adjustment between the different zones, which mm -hmm. is really awesome. Um, each independent zone uh, condensate can be a separate fraction, like I was saying. With uh, you can use that's it awesome. in that way. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you, for example, if you want to do some distillation of, of um, you know, like I said, like terpenes, that'd yeah. be a good option there. Optional packed bed enables fractionation. That's what I was talking about before. Online decarb in the third zone is possible in our gas counterflow. Uh, no reflux reservoir. Um, that is the reflux reservoir is this is what I'm talking about. You see this, yep. this is where things are, you know, the oil comes down here and this is a jacketed area and it just cooks in there for a little while. Oh. And we're trying to really maintain the integrity of the oils. So if you can eliminate that cooking yeah. exercise, that, that's a good thing for your, um, and that's the no systems. reflux reservoir. So right. you don't have that. So it's, there's no place for it to cook because it's a continuous flow. Right, right. Exactly. Um, it's also methods driven. It's C1, D1, D2 compliant, uh, data logging, automated reporting, all that stuff, reduced maintenance and automated cleaning methods. So that, that's what happens. All of this stuff right here is what happens when you put data systems and have methods driven, uh, equipment. That's cool. Now, a lot of the other equipment that you see on the market is not, it, it is methods driven because people have methods, but they're not automated methods. You're not lo like loading up method one, gotcha. program one. Or method two, program two, you know what I mean? Okay. With different temperatures and and, and uh, conditions with it. So, um, so yeah, that's the Fractron. And that's, uh, so what I have here is a characteristic, um, you know, comparison chart now. Okay. And I, a disclaimer, these are my own, uh, my own opinions. Um, but it also is kind of a feature comparison. So they're, they're, they're pretty, it's pretty good. Um, Everything being equal, the Fractron has way more automation. That has to do with the fact that uh, you have three independent control zones, you have mm -hmm. three independent pumps, and you can also ha integrate with a downstream process. So compared to the traditional falling film and the Rotovap, it, it's, it's way better on automation. In terms of continuous operation, uh, the Fractron wins because uh, you really don't have to recirculate the way you would with the falling film, okay, sure. and with the Rotovap. The falling film probably gets two stars, I guess, because I'd say that you know it's a it's a you don't really have to take the thing apart. Right. You can just recirculate it with a pump. So, yeah. um, data data and batch logging. I'm kind of going to skip a bunch of these and go to the main things here. You can use packing or tubes. There's no ro there's no packing or tubes with Rotovap. We can you do that. So you have added functionality uh, with the Fractron and uh, multi pass in a single contained run. That's us. So that that's the the main thing there, and then it's also built with all the GMP uh, processes in mind. So gotcha. that's the main uh, difference here. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, yeah. When so the why? Okay, why would you stay with the Rotovap when these other alternatives are available? Well, it it, it has to do with uh, perceived cost. Perceived cost. perceived cost. Uh, okay. In I, I mean. People have to have, uh, you know, enough money up front to buy a Fractron, right. but there's value in use, yes. you know, because you're saving on labor. Uh, you're also saving on 
you know, basically solvents. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's where we have this calculator that we put together so that you, it, it's not really comparing, um, you know, ethanol and I'm sorry, rotavap and falling film, but it is comparing ethanol and CO2. So we can, we can kind of go through that. A so that's bit. the real rotavap rumble. Yeah, that, that is the real rotavap rumble. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I mean, if we were going to add up, if we were to do a calculator, which I did not do for like at rotavap versus falling film, I think that the main thing would just be, um, you know, labor, labor differences between sure. the two. I mean, if I can take a big vat of, uh, you know, winterized ethanol, yeah. Uh, with some oil in it and turn on the button, turn the method and just let it run. And I, I could let it run literally overnight if I wanted to. And there was enough feed in there. It could just run. I, that would be much, much, much better than a road of app where I'd have to have someone come in, um, stop it, re empty it. Sure. Fill it, empty it, fill it, uh, you know, that type of thing. It's just a pain yeah, to do. So you bet. Um, yeah, that that's the main thing. This is awesome. So um, applications. Obviously, solvent removal from viscous fluids, that's what we use it for. Solvent recovery, we also use it for that. Sure. Solvent reproofing. So if you want to uh, reproof your solvents, um, separation of aromas and flavors from extracts, that you can use the falling film for that. Uh, solvent drying and solvent reuse. So these are all different different applications that people would have. For so falling that, film. That is the end of the slideshow. And um, yeah. So um, let me see here. I'm going to push escape here. Now, okay, so I made up this calculator here just to kind of show you um, what to do if you want to calculate the cost of, say, your ethanol evaporation and your cooling and on your heating and all that stuff for the Fractron or for any process, really. Okay. So this is, um, and you can get this calculator by going to extractlab.com slash calculators with an S, uh, ethanol ev dash evaporation. And, and uh, the library is on that page. So yeah. just the calculators page. And right. just so you know, if you go there, there's a big tab button there. You just click on calculators. Let's, and let's show them go. where that is. So you just yeah. click on calculators. Calculators. And then here's all you just of scroll our down calculators. Yeah. Through the library. And right. Those are all the calculators that are available to you guys. There's a lot. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? There's a lot of calculators. So um, yeah. Okay. So there's our calculator here that we're going to talk about. Um, by the way, um, we uh, thousands of people are looking at our calculators. They really are. Um, I I added up all the people who have been looking at them and using them, and it's it's in the thousands already. I I was blown away. So, um, you know, a lot of people are using it to um, you know, calculate yield from their crop. They're using it to um, you know, you know, take their do their dosing, do their tincture dosing. Um, well, this was our, a brilliant idea to put this on our website. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So well done. Good idea. <laughs> I think what we need to do is, uh, actually, the, the number one is the investor pro forma. Yeah. That is the number one. Uh, you know, people want to know, okay, how do I really go about modeling my business? So that's the number one. And what that there. means in layman's terms, how do I make money? Yeah, that's it. How do I make money? That's it. And you know what? When we, I was just talking to this gal from uh, Turkey, as I told you, and I said, look, we're not, we don't just sell pieces of machinery, which is the best in the world at this, what we do is we teach you how to make money and, and without, and we meet and exceed expectations all along that whole process. Absolutely. We don't, we don't just, we're not just trying to sell you an extractor or a uh, great whiz bang falling film deal. No. By the way, what's the sound effect for that? The, oh, this one right here. Yeah, that's, that's Fractron right there. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, and what was what was Rotovap besides the? Uh, oh, the Rotovap was uh that was that was this one, right? Oh no, no, that that was this one. That's the break, breaking oh, yeah. glass. <laughs> okay, sorry. all right. Okay, uh, go on. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, let's kind of go over this. Okay, now. sorry. Okay, Cal so uh, ethanol removal cost calculator. So let's just say you have a process. I I don't care if it's ethanol or CO two. Okay. And you want to know how much it's going to cost you uh, to really remove the ethanol. Okay. okay. Now, I want to walk you through this because the, the concepts are important. Um, first of all, the liters of ethanol that need to be processed. If you're uh, doing like a uh, winterization process with a, a supercritical method, typically mm -hmm. you'll use ethanol to winterize that, that oil. Okay. Sure. You don't need to have a lot of ethanol, but you need to have some in order to get it fluidized. So, um, and 
if you use a subcritical method, some people don't use ethanol at all. Right. Yeah, you know, sometimes they just they just take it and run it subcritical. The trade off there is that it's slower. That's right. So you know, and usually it's done at a little bit lower pressure. And if you're running small batches, that's okay. Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, that's, it's good. That's no, good. It's all good. Um, and um, you know, I think that there's a we we had a we talked we were talking to some guy yesterday about uh, the differences between uh, like why would you want to take the terpenes out ahead of time rather than use your extractor to take them out. So, you know, one of those things would be just, you know, you can, uh, they're decoupled, the processes are decoupled so that you can use them in formulation downstream wherever you want to use them, yeah. as opposed to having it all together and you're kind of stuck with just that, yeah. right? So yeah. that's the that's the main thing. Well, and you also capture a lot more terpenes at decarb. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I mean, you do. A lot yeah. more. And they're, yeah. they're fresher yeah, because they, they're not... It, because they're not baked. processed yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Baked or processed. Um, so vacuum distillation is a good idea. All right. So um, I know somebody who was both baked and processed. <laughs> that was an interesting conversation. That was us last week. <laughs> <laughs> After tinctures. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Yes. We were we, we were definitely um, mellow afterward. Yeah. And know. just so you know, I got I got great um, <laughs> proposals out that afternoon. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were the discounts. We had to reject every one. It was everything was discounted. But I tried, guys. I really tried for you. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So here we go. Um, so if you're gonna do about a ton a day of 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 uh, CO2, you're gonna need about uh, 540 liters to um, winterize that, um, and that's for CO2 now. Um, in here, you can uh, get your kilowatt hour. If you have a high kilowatt hour, if you're paying a lot for electricity, uh, like Southern California, for example, or whatever, this one might be up at the, you know, 16 cents. Uh, but we we pay right around nine cents right now. And for the those of you international, and there's a lot of international users of our calculators. Yeah. Everything's in USD. So yes, that's US correct. dollars. So and then uh, what's the recovery of the ethanol? So this is. This is a question of how much you recover uh, your ethanol in your solution. So, um, you know, remember when I said that our target was like 5,000 ppm or yeah. 2,000 to 5,000 ppm, that's mm -hmm. what we're looking to do. That would be, you know, right up here in, in the 90, 98, 99% recovery, okay, of the ethanol. Wow. Okay, now not all, not all solvent removal apparatuses are equal. So sometimes uh, that's what, like a lot of times, People will use a secondary process along with their decarb process to remove the ethanol too, because there's a lot of ethanol in there. Okay. So um, if if you degrade and you, you don't recover that ethanol, you can see how that cost for the lost ethanol goes up. Wow. You can see that. So if you you're that. Okay, so if you that? have a lot of ethanol in your in your recovered solvent, your winterized oil, mm -hmm. and in and you're so you're losing some of it. What are you losing it to? You well, you're losing it to your decarboxylation. Your, just, your post decarboxylation sure. process. Okay. So that, that would be that. Um, and you can see it, it can be when you're dealing with very small amounts of ethanol like this, it's an, it's almost not that big a deal. You know, you're looking, okay, you get 98% recovery. It's about 50 bucks a day. This is the electrical cost that you would have to basically cool that liquid down, heat that liquid up and then uh, evaporate the liquid. I wanted to point out here that Evaporation is really where you are spending all your money when it comes to electrical. You wow. know, it it really is a the heat of vaporization is what they call it, and that's that's really where you're spending all your money. So total kilowatt hour, you take this total kilowatt hour times a an efficiency factor, which I have baked into the calculator. Mm -hmm. Nothing's 100% efficient, okay? So I have some assumptions in there, and uh, that's where you get this electrical. Is that going to come up at my next review? Uh, yeah, some efficiencies, yes. yeah, the baked in ones. <laughs> the fact that I'm not a hundred percent efficient. Well, oh boy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's do, let's do some different things here. Now, if, if I was to do a ton of day, uh, in an ethanol process, mm -hmm. right. I mean, you'd be looking at somewhere, uh, if you're to do a one pound for one gallon of ethanol per pound. Okay, so you'd be looking at 7,796 liters. 
love that you the way you were glancing at your cheat sheet over yeah. there because <laughs> I, I made a i made a table there i to make sure that I, I had it all right he's got so. tables after his tables <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what happened to me when did i start thank making, you dr john when did i start making tables of data i don't know are you an analytical chemist <laughs> <laughs> That's right. so here we go look at the look at the electrical cost we got I 222 parents, you were doing it at birth i think i don't think so i do no that was a learned learned trait was it? Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. I knew you when you were little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was making little tables, little charts. I had my little pencil. Paper. 10 times 36. Did I have that little no. slide roll? No, you had your grapes like set up as. <laughs> oh, <geez. you> know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, here you can see your electrical cost, uh, 222 uh, there, versus, and then your solvent ethanol. Ooh. It would be 742. That's just from the ethanol removal process, not from the extraction process. Wow. That's per day. Wow. Or if you're going to do two And this is based on, I see you didn't mention this, but right now you're using an 18, is that an $18? Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can kind of move that down. down. If you're going to denature it, you're going to go crazy on us and try to not, kill everybody. <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't do okay. denatured yeah, ethanol. Do, but, do like but right now. So then you can get it down to 454. That's why people do that. But don't do that. Well, I know, but that's why people do it. Cause they're, they're like, they're losing money. If they, if they actually pay like right now, the spot price is like 26. But that's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah. You're talking because about Because the liability is huge. Don't so do that. A couple different illustrations here. One would be, you know, with CO2, you're talking about the total amount uh, for winterization of right around, you know, let's just say 600. Okay. And $83 a day versus the, uh, you know, 8,000. Wow. Uh, which you're talking about a thousand with 228. So it's definitely more energy efficient. The yeah. CO2 method is um, just from the standpoint of total kilowatts used to heat and cool and evaporate. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's a much more energy efficient. So yeah. So that's you're a, saving everything. So this is, this is another calculator that is phenomenal. Uh, another tool from extract lab, United science from Dr. John. And you know, we do need to put a dollar sign on that though. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, so. Oh, I'll put us dollars on that. Oh, you, you can. But the dollar sign would be good for, you know, that a thousand for eight. I mean, right, right here, you mean yes. electrical cost here for yeah. dollar. And the and cost of loss. That's a good all. idea. We We're want to just put it. dollar signs there. Right. That's all. Um, and because then it's easier to go, okay, that's what I want to pay attention to. Um, and, and your usage. There's a lot of people that I've been talking to who are really concerned about, you know, their carbon footprint. They're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, how much power they're using mm -hmm. and utilizing in their facility. Right. Um, and, and, and their costs and how do they recapture those costs and this is this is it uh there's there's a lot more that you're doing for the environment and um and sustainability and right. you know all of that using the co2 process because it's more efficient you it's more it's less costly from a carbon footprint standpoint Absolutely. everything yeah. because uh, the co2 that you're using is actually a reuse co2 so yeah. Um, it has a, this, the carbon has already been carbon credit wise. It's already been paid for, but as opposed to ethanol, which is, uh, which is, you know, it takes a lot of carbon. So if you want to ethanol. reduce your carbon footprint, use CO2. Yeah, pretty oh, much. Man, good stuff. Yeah. And also reduction of, you know, your total kilowatt hour. So, um, you, you don't need to have as much electricity in your building. Uh, you know, this is, uh, specifically just for one process now okay. in a whole line of processes. So what you want to do is you want to. Uh, really look at, you know, first of all, you know, what are all the kilowatts I have for each process, add those all up and then, you know, make sure that your building that you have is, is addressing that. Now, the other thing that you need to think about is with the cooling and the heating, um, you're something that's not baked into these numbers is you have lots of losses to the atmosphere. Okay. Mm -hmm. If your cooler is, uh, your chiller is outside, it's losing them to the atmosphere outside. But if it's inside, you have to compensate for those watts uh, that are being dumped into your facility with uh, added tonnage on your on your chiller, which yeah. is uh, your air conditioning. Right? Sure. So, because you don't want your rooms to be really hot, so your your engineer is going to always ask you, okay, so what is the heat load for this particular piece of equipment? Mm -hmm. Because they want to make sure that they have enough cooling power in the room to to counteract the heat losses and everything. Gotcha. So um, that that's something you need to think about. Um, when you hire us uh, for your, um, you know, your 
your your basically your facility layout we give you those heat loss calcs so yep. okay awesome well i i love this and so to to reiterate okay so when we summarize what we're doing we've got um rotovap mm -hmm. right there it is and then we also have um that's the oh no no that's the snow <laughs> that's what happens when people talk <laughs> you just have you talk they, <laughs> I love it. Okay. So that this is, is oh, this right here. That's right. That's it. right here. It's the yellow one. That's the frag drop. Oh, yeah. I'm colorblind. <laughs> okay. All right. But it's this <laughs> one. That one. <laughs> it's this quadrant. That, that one's Rumstein, so don't put that one on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we can go. Okay. So how based on Rotovap, yeah. Rumble, and Fractron. Right. Um, how many Fractrons? How many rotovaps will Fractron replace? Well, it process? depends on the rotor size of the rotovap. Okay. Okay. So the the Fractron is sized for forty gallons per hour. Ooh. Okay. Of throughput, and it's a real forty gallons per hour. Like, okay, a lot of the a lot of the systems that are out there, they're they're like 40, 50 gallons per hour. But you have to do it three times. Oh. So you have to take that forty and divide it by three. Oh my gosh. See what I'm saying? So. Yeah. That's a, that's kind of a, a marketing gimmick, I think. Yeah. So if you have to take, if you do 40 gallons per hour and then you have to do it three times, what is it? What is it? You yeah, know, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's not, 40 it's not gallons. efficient. Okay. This is a true 40 gallons per hour. You can set it up at 40. It'll go through, actually go through at 40 gallons per hour. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, yeah, so that, that's, uh, the thing. So with the Rotovap, however, when you size those, mm -hmm. Um, so you can get small ones. You can get one liter, five liter, 10 liter, 20 liter, 50 liter. So the throughput on those really has to do with how big that bulb is. Yeah. And, um, they make real, I mean, manufacturers make really large ones, like hundred liter ones. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. They're just huge. But can you imagine, uh, trying to get the material out of a hundred liter? I mean, a hundred liter flask. You could put, put your arm in it. You could, you could put your head in that. <laughs> you, I mean, put... <laughs> you know, I think, uh. I am from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a bunch of. Uh... Okay, so let me bang my head against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Sorry. Okay, oh. James, we cannot have these on here anymore. <laughs> okay, so when we're talking about Fractron, what do we? Okay, so how at a twenty liter, which is a typical size? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how many would that replace? Do you think? Um. Boy, I don't know. It, uh, five to 10, at least at the very minimum, probably even more than that. More than I'm that. being very conservative. He's being very conservative. It's 10 to 12. Oh, is it really? Yes. I, I didn't do the calculation. Yeah. So, yeah, that's okay. What about 50? That's why I'm the chief revenue all right, officer. All right. There you go. <laughs> we should make a calculator for that. You, you, how do you know that? Did you do, did you, did you go into the lab and check? No, out? I talked to the guys who are running okay, it out there. All right. All right. That's how, yeah. They're, all right. There's, I've even talked to the engineers and stuff. Okay. You all think right. I came up with that with my, on my own? I, well, I didn't know. I no, didn't. I couldn't. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm in the chief revenue office. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a chemist, nor am I an engineer. <laughs> I am not an accountant or an attorney, nor do I play one on television. The disclaimer again. <laughs> but we're, no, we should have the disclaimer on one of these. We should. Things. We really should. But to get to there, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it, this is the biggest um bottleneck in the process it is one of them yeah for I mean, sure you got a couple but this is i think what i hear and when i talk over and over and over to these guys this is the biggest roadblock because they can get everything all done and when they hit the road of apps it's like er, stop and even when they add it there's a it's a labor intensive to swap them out as you saw in that graph mm -hmm. everything but you want to get to here and you don't want the cost of Bam. Right? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> All right. I like it. All right. So, so that, that's what we want to do. All right. So, and you can replace those with a continuous stream and it, it got sneaked in there. We didn't, he just kind of blew over this, but you can attach that right to your still. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So it's continuous through Fractron right to your so. Yeah. So basically what you need is an automation for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you need sensors to do that with luckily on our clear still and our Fractron, they're made to work together. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's a, 
basically an ultrasonic sensor uh, and a eye, oh. essentially that 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 talk to each other and say, okay, uh, slow down, or speed up, slow gotcha. down. So it's it's keeping the levels of production for each one of those systems, you know, in a in a line. Okay, so, I was getting offended there for a minute. I thought you said I had no sense. No, uh, that's oh, not no, no. You were talking about actual sensors. Sensors. Sensors, yes. not. I have no sense. <laughs> That's right. Okay, just check it. Just make it sure. That's good. So yeah, I mean, you 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 have the incense, the sensors. You put them on the systems. You make them talk together. If they're integrated, what's awesome about that is you're going to go faster for sure. <laughs> That's right. No question about it. Doesn't that that sounds? Yeah. Cool. That's uh, what, what I want. What's awesome about that also is you don't have to really um, deal with moving uh, the winterized oil over to the distillate and pouring it in and storing it in tween there oh. it so it almost eliminates the revenue or the actually the inventory yeah which is basically cash sitting in a oh vault so somewhere. now that goes back to continuous operation right, continuous right. flow and right. you know less sittage right that's really good yeah it, because and that's part of that process where you go and that's the roadblock you don't want. Right. Right. Exactly. You don't want to sit there and go, oh my gosh. It's it's so dying. slow. We can't do that. So not at all. Okay. So good. Yet. So we don't want this. We want this. Okay. And if you want that, let us know and ask the questions. So I loved everything about this presentation. Yeah. I learned a lot. Good. I learn a lot every day with you. Awesome. I do. Okay. So really, really good. And the calculator, awesome. Continue yeah. to go to these calculators. Yeah. Um, any, I know that we really bounced here and I've got, we've got questions, but what we're going to do is we're going to convert these questions into our frequently asked uh, Qs, FAQs, FAQs yeah. on, online. And by the way, the FAQs are exhaustive. We don't do just one liners. I think we have uh, 110 published already. Wow. Yeah. So they're, some of them are, yeah, 110 unique ones. So you could go to Extract Lab University, which is our online, just going through our FAQs. Yes. And the blogs are, you know, the blog posts are not like three sentences. They're like pages. Right. They're really, really good, robust. We've got great writers, great guidance, good folks. Calculators galore. Yeah. You, you Dr. John and Matt Anderson, do a lot of that writing. Yeah, we yeah we have a good time doing that. So we 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 write them. We have different topics, and of course we have an entire. Oh, we we must have an entire. What well, we got? Our our article backlog is probably on the order of like 100 to 150 articles. No wow. question about it. We just you know we kind of brainstorm everything we need to write on. So um, I try to put out something once a week. Yeah. You know, and, very prolific. Uh, yeah. So I mean, like Mark Twain. <laughs> kind of like, we are on the river yeah i guess so um the saint croix river by the way which is awesome and you know so that's fine and then we try to do a video a week it, you know i've been looking at the calculators I'm looking at all of our different pieces of equipment saying okay what calculators would be um you know useful to our customers and uh yeah, and the people who are trying to get into the business, that's what we're here for. That's so. great. And and yeah. we so appreciate you. One of the things that we really like is talking to you and getting your questions on your business process, what where you are yeah. in the flow. Talking to a lot of startups. By the way, I mean, we haven't talked about this in a, quite a while, but the industry itself, for just the CBD side, it's, it's a $5 billion industry. Yeah, it's huge. Right now. And it is ramping. I mean, you can feel the energy out there. We are on a trajectory to get to a 23 billion. Yes. By in within three years. Within a couple of years. Yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, that's what everything everybody's saying. That's a big growth. There's room for everybody in there, and you want to be doing it right. There's also a push away from that embedded base of ethanol uh, because of the residual factor that you keep hearing from us over and over and over. We hit that hard uh, because it's future liability for you and you know you you see that you know what where's the biggest uh element of that residual issue uh at the tobacco industry right yeah yeah residuals on there and then it's going to come back and bite you square just, in the ass just the cost of uh solvent recovery alone yeah, and not to mention the cost yeah. 
of the operating costs. Yeah. So we want to help you. We want to make sure we're here for you answering your questions on business. Using our calculators, we work with um, startup guys, investors to evaluate business plans of people who want to get in this, finding all the right people. And the, they're using our calculators to build their stuff. And I want to make sure, and again, we'll hit the button for the disclaimer, you know, these are our best guess, this is what it is. You know, past performance is not indicative of future results. People can and do lose money. <laughs> <laughs> Swim at your own risk. Do not drive if drowsiness or death occurs. <laughs> and death may occur. <laughs> <laughs> well, death always occurs. Well, unfortunately. We're human. Yes, I guess right? so. Well, most of us. Death and taxes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> do certain things in the world. <laughs> I love it. So thank you again for the time. Oh, by the way, we got to figure out I, we, the, uh, where it says, join us next week for a topic. topic. Oh, my word. What are we going to do next? Why week? don't we do the clear still next week? We can do the same thing. We'll do, uh, we'll do, like do the comparison. Con we'll do a continuous flow and we'll do the calculators and, uh, yeah. Continuous flow. We could talk because I'm that. out of my sense. Apparently let's do it. Right. Be fun. Okay. So we're going to do that. That's, that's good. <laughs> Technical thing. Well, man down, man down. <laughs> we, we keep doing that. So we thank you for being here next week. We're going to do, uh, it's clear still. We're going to do all, all things distillation. Distillation. Yeah. Distill. Okay. So we're going to do all things distillation next week. Uh, you heard it here. So that means we've got, uh, we'll probably just pull out of the air, a distillation guide, a calculator, video, Absolutely. whatever, yeah. by the way, um, if you've got garb, extract lab garb, get that, put it on, take a picture, get it on there because we're going to hand out and then watch the videos because we're going the next 10 comments on any video entered will, will be entered in to win a drain droid hoodie. All I want, right. I want a drain droid hoodie. You can't have one. But that would be so cool. I could wear it here and I could put it up over my head. I would, I would do that. I would, I would be so modeling that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Don't, wouldn't that be cool? Me in a hoodie? It would be. Yeah. It wouldn't, wouldn't be bad. You could do it. What do you mean it wouldn't be bad? That's yeah. not vociferous enough. <laughs> Does somebody with a hoodie use the word vociferous? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a hoodie? <laughs> I'm thinking. I think I do have a hoodie. You do? Well, then there you go. Someone with a hoodie does use the word vociferous. I think it's a workout hoodie. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever put the hood up. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Do you have to wear mittens? <laughs> I'm thinking about when I grew up. T-shirt, mittens. T-shirt, no. <laughs> what do you admit? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Next week, all things distillation, resources, calculators, live tours, CBD jam sessions. Call us. Uh, Lucas, Eli, Manuel, myself, we're ready to talk about anything. Um, and also, our chat is on fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We have, oh, chat on our website. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about that for a minute? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Do that real quick. Hey, James, can I get over to the real quick? We um, have our, we have our bot. Yeah. So we, we were working on our, a little, our little robot guy. There he, he is right there. He looks a little high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Let's see if we, let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I asked, okay. Do you want access to our advanced secrets of the universe? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of been changing that question to see if, I love you know, that. when people click a little on. AB chest. Yeah, whatever. I like that. So yeah, if you, if you, if you, if you really click on one of these, it will take you into, you know, Hey, here's some resources for you. If you want to chat with uh, a person you've been chatting with, uh, you can go ahead and put that in there and, I don't know. It's just a good resource, uh, resources. That would be there. fun. So challenge to all of you watching stump our bot, <laughs> <laughs> but it will take you everywhere you want to go. So yeah. if you're an investor and you want to get to calculators or if you're building things and you want to get to different things, it'll give you resources. It'll give you calculators. I I'm impressed. Yeah. I, I, I was pretty impressed by it too. Yeah. So. The, the way it works and in the way you set it up, and Dr. John set this up. Yeah. This is this is what he likes to do in his spare time. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be putting in more and more and more, uh, you know, linking to specific resources so that based on, you know, your needs, so you, you will self-select yourself. You just click it in there. Also, we have, uh, uh, basically, we're adding in some keywords in there. 
Uh, and that will allow you to really, um, you know, you can type in, okay, supercritical extractor, and it'll take you to resources there. So that should be pretty good. Which is awesome. And any, any time you can get to any of our team members, yeah. either through chat or we can, I think we can get on a phone call or even a, a, a Zoom or a video chat right yeah, away right. on anything through this. So ask any time we try to rotate who's available because we work when you work and we try to be available even evenings and weekends um, because we work around the world and we try to do that. So Eli is in the background going, yep, ready. Call me at 11 PM. Cause that's when he is. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is actually a good song to, to yeah. kind of jive out to. Exactly. I like it because the reality is when we're, when we're running, that's what we're doing. The bot is there. So thank you for building that. No um, problem. And and be here for us. Okay, so check out all the other resources, live tour CBD jam sessions uh, that we can even get to here. Um, the guides are on there, calculating library, mini courses. We did everything, uh, the Road of App Rumble today. Yep. Next week, it's the distillation. Distillation, yeah. We're, we had to come up with a word. All things distillation, I mean, yeah. whatever. All right. And, and remember, we don't want that. We want that. Okay. I love it. I Right. Being here. Thank you guys. Keep those cards and questions coming in. Uh, great show. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Yes, Sweet. nice. Good show. Yeah, well done. You